Welcome back. Uh, let's update you on a developing story. The United Nations Secretary General telling the Security Council that the dreams of a generation of young Afghans, particularly women and girls, hang in the balance. Antonio Guterres speaking during an emergency session of the Council after the Taliban took full control of Afghanistan, including the capital Kabul, over the weekend, which saw President Ashraf Ghani flee to Tajikistan. Guterres called on the Taliban and all parties to respect and protect international humanitarian law and the rights and freedoms of all persons. Earlier on, we spoke to SABC News correspondent Sherwin Bryce Pease about this. He joins us now from the UN headquarters in New York. Sherwin, where you say uh, the UN has just released a statement. So uh, tell us about that, the calls from human rights defenders for the Security Council to take appropriate actions under Chapter 7 of the UN Charter. Yeah, we uh, just heard from the UN Security Council, the collective 15-member body just issuing uh, a statement. A piece, so I'll read that to you. It's just come through to us. The members of the UN Security Council called for an immediate cessation of hostilities and the establishment through inclusive negotiations of a new government that is united, inclusive and representative, including with the full, equal and meaningful participation of women. They underlined that institutional continuity and adherence to Afghanistan's international obligations, as well as the safety and security of all Afghan and international citizens, must be respected. It's quite a lengthy statement. It also talks about uh, um, unimpeded humanitarian access. Of course, we talked earlier at Sapiso about the 18.4 million people that essentially half the population of Afghanistan that require humanitarian uh, uh, assistance, uh, a situation that would have been exacerbated by uh, the Taliban's uh, maneuvering uh, around the country as these various political uh, provincial uh, capitals began to fall. And of course, uh, getting the crown jewel over the weekend in terms of uh, President Ashraf Ghani fleeing, uh, the collapse of the uh, civilian government in Afghanistan, and of course, Taliban reasserting their control over the capital. So a very powerful statement, a, a starting point here, uh, reaching consensus among the 15 members, calling for an all-inclusive government that very critically, very specifically, uh, has to include uh, the role of women. That's going to be a new development for a Taliban uh, that, of course, has um, usurped the rights of women, has undermined the rights of women. And the big concern from the international community is that with them reasserting authority in Afghanistan, that that playbook would come back to the fore. The council saying, not on our watch. We want women in the new government. So we'll see it's a piece of Mm. So, Sean, I'm just uh, that uh, we mentioned uh, the cause uh, for by human rights defenders for the Security Council to take appropriate action. Specifically, we mentioned uh, and, uh, Chapter 7 of the UN Charter to safeguard the human rights and humanitarian needs of the people in Afghanistan. So, so take us through what has been said. Yeah, Human Rights Watch earlier issuing a statement, said piece of calling for the international community to come together. The UN Security Council, they said, should adopt a resolution. We've just seen a statement. Of course, a resolution is something that uh, would be, uh, would compel the parties to adhere to what the Security Council has said, a press statement, not so. They called for a resolution demanding that all the parties to the Afghan conflict abide by uh, international human rights standards and international humanitarian law, notably the humane treatment of civilians and combatants in custody. It should reiterate that the International Criminal Court to which Afghanistan is a party, it's a signatory to the Rome Statute, can prosecute war crimes and other atrocities. So we have since that statement seen now a statement from the UN Security Council, but it's also a big concern for the Secretary General who addressed this very issue in his remarks to the Council earlier. Let's watch. The international community must unite to make sure that Afghanistan is never again used as a platform or safe haven for terrorist organizations. I appeal to the Security Council and the international community as a whole to stand together, to work together and act together and use all tools at its disposal to suppress the global terrorist threat in Afghanistan and to guarantee that basic human rights will be respected. Regardless of who holds power, these two fundamental principles in which our world has such a deep and abiding interest must be upheld.
He was, he was also asked a question departing the Security Council. Secretary General, what do you say to Afghans who feel abandoned by the international community? His response, the international community needs to come together and to act with one single voice, said Piso, to say that we want an inclusive government in Afghanistan, that we want human rights in general and women's rights in particular to be respected. We are beginning to see the beginning uh, of that, certainly from that statement from the Security Council. And then there's what's going to happen next, uh, calls also for an inclusive transitional government in Afghanistan and for the international community to continue to support months-long negotiations between the Afghan parties. But is that possible given the Taliban's leverage based on their ascendancy in recent days? Yeah, I mean, it's an important point, right? The Taliban's leverage and position has been bolstered, certainly by the territorial and geographical gains they've made in the last week. So they have a trump card now, in, in, in a sense, in those negotiations. And will they now follow through, given the efforts that have gone into those talks under the auspices of the Qatari government in Doha, months-long talks that have staggered along the way? And, of course, uh, uh, shifting the calculus now on the ground will influence how those negotiations conclude. Uh, but also, Tsipi, so importantly here, is what regional powers in, in, in you know, Afghanistan's neighbors, what pressure are they going to be able to bring to bear on the outcome of these negotiations and in Afghanistan that they certainly uh, hope to seek? It was a question put to Pakistan's Ambassador Mun Munir Akram, who spoke at the Security Council after that Security Council meeting. This is how he framed it. Watch. It's important that the UN is there and should continue to be there. Uh, the humanitarian needs need to be met and the UN is best placed to do that. UNAMA is there. We hope a good early assessment will be made of what is needed in terms of humanitarian help for the Afghan people and that uh, this will be provided and Pakistan will, will uh, stand ready to facilitate uh, such humanitarian help. Uh, as as far as any other actions, I think uh, we should, uh, uh, the United Nations should see what the Afghans require uh, and, and to continue to help uh, with the negotiation for a po inclusive political government. I think that the role for the United Nations, we should continue uh, to support the Afghans to come together uh, and that sort of encouragement uh, it should be should be uh, necessary, I think. He also says for Afghanistan, the final choice is for the people of Afghanistan to choose what system they want. If they want an Islamic system, I think they have to talk amongst themselves and evolve what kind of system they want. Mm -hmm. But of course, if the Taliban is in charge of that process, it remains to be seen, Sir Pisa, what sort of rights would be afforded uh, other elements of, uh, you know, so other stakeholders in, Af in Afghanistan in terms of those negotiations and the final outcome. So, Sherwin, we, we touched on this earlier on that it's an opportune time in terms of political adversaries. Over the weekend, we had former President Donald Trump uh, call for President Biden to resign over the scenes that we are seeing in Afghanistan. He, uh, Biden, that is, is expected to address the nation's expectations. Yeah, an interesting statement coming out uh, of uh, the uh, uh, former President Donald Trump calling for Biden to resign. He says um, to resign in disgrace for what he allowed to happen in Afghanistan and along with other uh, domestic issues. But it's worth remembering that this uh, withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan is a process initiated and concluded uh, in the signing of a, a, a negotiated settlement with the Taliban in February of 2020, uh, signed by the Secretary of State at the time, Mike Pompeo. So this is, this is their process. It began under them. The withdrawal would have happened in May under that deal, uh, 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 President Biden extending it to September. But look, this is happening under the incumbent's watch. So okay. were there mistakes made in this withdrawal? This was supposed to be a smooth transition. It certainly isn't the case if the scenes at Kabul airport are to be uh, believed. But also, will he defend the decision, right? I mean, that's the expectation. Who is the president going to blame for this? And I think in their crosshairs right now is the fallen government of Ashraf mm. Ghani. 
uh, given the billions and billions of U.S. dollars that were uh, pumped into Afghanistan to capacitate the 300,000 strong Afghan military, okay. including an air force using latest U.S. weaponry and technology, uh, that's what he will say probably. All right, thanks for that show. Show up, Bryce Peace, our correspondent at the UN headquarters in New York. Still on international news, the death toll from a magnitude 7.2 earthquake in Haiti has claimed around 1,300 or 1,300 lives with close to 6,000 others injured. And those numbers are expected to continue to rise. Adding urgency to rescue and recovery.